So this is part two of our video on conversion problems. We already discussed two very interesting conversion problems in the previous video, right? So let's continue that streak in this video and look at our first question. We have ethanol that is treated with PCC and the product obtained is further treated with dilute NaOH followed by treatment with acidic MnO4 which on heating strongly gives us the final product. Now we need to figure out which among the following statements is true regarding this final product. Does it give a positive iodoform test? Does it give a positive failings test? Or does it give effervescence on reaction with sodium bicarbonate? Now this might look difficult but trust me it's really very easy. What we need to do is simply write down this in the form of reactions and solve it one at a time. Okay? So let's start with ethanol. Ethanol on treatment with PCC, a mild oxidizing agent would give us what? Aldehyde, right? PCC is a mild oxidizing agent which would oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes and secondary alcohols to ketones. Now if we had acidic MnO4 at this step then we would get an acid. PCC very efficiently stops the oxidation at the aldehyde level. So the product that we get here is acetaldehyde or ethanol. Now CH3CHO reacts with dilute NaOH. So tell me what exactly is happening here? Yes, aldol reaction, right? So those aldehydes that have an alpha hydrogen, like in the case of our ethanol, can undergo aldol reaction in the presence of dilute NaOH. Now remember, we are talking about aldol reaction here. There is no heating involved in this step. We haven't mentioned that there is any heating involved in this reaction because heating would give us an aldol condensation product, which is an alpha beta unsaturated product, right? But here, when we have an aldol reaction, the final product is what exactly? A beta hydroxyaldehyde. So, as you can see here, one molecule of acetaldehyde would form the enolate ion and the nucleophilic enolate ion would attack the carbonyl carbon of another molecule of acetaldehyde giving us beta hydroxyaldehyde. So, this is the product of a typical aldol reaction. In an aldol condensation reaction, we would further eliminate a water molecule from alpha beta carbon atoms and get an alpha beta unsaturated product. Now what's the next step? In the next step, we are treating this beta hydroxyaldehyde with acidic KMnO4. Again, a very strong oxidizing agent. So what groups get oxidized in this reaction? Obviously, aldehyde would get oxidized to carboxylic acid. But is that it? Is there anything else that can get oxidized here? Yes, the secondary alcohol, correct. So the secondary alcohol here would also get oxidized in the presence of KMnO4 to ketone. So the product that we get at the end of this step is a beta keto acid. CH3, C double bond O, CH2, COOH. Is that it? Is the reaction over? No, we have one final step which is heating. Okay, so no reagents here, we are simply heating this compound. So what do you think happens here? Now, if you remember, one of the characteristic reactions of carboxylic acids was decarboxylation, correct? And beta keto acids are an excellent substrate for decarboxylation reactions. So, for this particular compound to undergo decarboxylation, we don't need to do anything but simply provide strong heating. And when we do that, a stable molecule like carbon dioxide gets eliminated. And with the elimination of carbon dioxide, we get the final compound which is acetone. CH3, CO, CH3. So we won't go into the details of the mechanisms of these reactions because we have dealt with each of them in detail in other videos. So which among these statements would be appropriate for our final product ketone? Does it give effervescence on reaction with sodium bicarbonate? No, because it's not an acid, it's a ketone. It will not give effervescence with a base. What about failings test? Only aldehydes, that too aliphatic aldehydes give positive failings test. So ketone will not give a positive failings test here. And what about iodoform test? Absolutely. In this ketone, we have a CH3CO group, which means it would give a positive iodoform test and would form yellow colored precipitate of iodoform along with the carboxylate ion. So if this product further underwent an iodoform reaction, in that case, we would end up with a carboxylic acid, which is one carbon less than the ketone that we have here. So the answer is the final ketone gives a positive iodoform test. Let's look at one more reaction. 
In this question, it is given that an aliphatic aldehyde P reacts with formaldehyde in the presence of dilute NaOH to give R, which upon treatment with KCN gives S. On acidification and heating, S gives us the following product. And what do we need to do? We need to figure out the structure of the starting aliphatic aldehyde P. Now, this is an example of a deconstruction problem where we need to figure out the starting reactants from a given product. So, how do we go about this? Let's analyze the reactions that are taking place. In the first step, we have two aldehydes. One is an aliphatic aldehyde reacting with formaldehyde in the presence of dilute NaOH. Now, this indicates a classic aldol reaction, correct? Now, looking at formaldehyde, you might be tempted to say maybe it is Canizaro reaction. But is that so? Look at the reagents. We know that in Canizaro reaction, we use strong bases in concentrated amounts. So, here it would be concentrated KOH and often Canizaro reaction requires heating. But no such condition has been mentioned here. We have dilute NaOH which is indicative of an aldol reaction. Now, if one of our reactants does not have an alpha hydrogen like HCHO, it means the other aliphatic aldehyde must have an alpha hydrogen, correct? Only then we can have an aldol reaction, in this case more specifically a crossed aldol reaction. So, let's assume that the structure of a starting aldehyde P is RCH2CHO. For all we know, it could be R2CHCHO as well. We don't know exactly at this point, but let's go ahead with this assumption, okay? Let's assume that it is RCH2CHO so that it has an alpha hydrogen atom and formaldehyde, of course, doesn't have an alpha hydrogen atom. Now, when these two aldehydes undergo crossed aldol condensation reaction, the product that we get is this. How do we get this product? You see? The enolate ion from here, from P, would attack the carbonyl carbon atom and result in the formation of a beta hydroxy aldehyde, nothing but aldol. So, this is the alpha carbon atom and we have OH group at the beta carbon atom and this is a primary functional group. In the next step, we are treating this beta hydroxy aldehyde with KCN. So, CN minus would react with our aldol to give a product which looks like this, a cyanohydrin. And we get a cyanohydrin only if CN minus would attack the carbonyl carbon of our aldehyde, correct? But it's very normal to ask another question. Why do we end up getting a nucleophilic addition reaction and not a nucleophilic substitution reaction where CN minus replaces the OH group here? You see, CN minus as we know is a very strong nucleophile. It is eagerly or earnestly looking for an electrophilic site. And the carbonyl carbon of our aldehyde is much more electrophilic as compared to the carbon of our alcohol group. And not just that, for any nucleophilic substitution to be successful, it must have a good leaving group, correct? Now, if CN minus attacks this particular carbon, what is the leaving group here? The leaving group is a very poor OH minus group. OH minus is an extremely poor leaving group. It does not encourage a nucleophilic substitution reaction and this is why the CN minus would prefer to attack the carbonyl carbon of our aldehyde group and result in a nucleophilic addition reaction giving us a cyanohydrin. The next step is acidification and heating. Now CN groups on acidic hydrolysis gives us the corresponding carboxylic acid. Now look at this compound. We have an alcohol, an OH group and a COH group in the same molecule. So that means there is a possibility to form an ester. We know that in acidic medium, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid can react with each other to form an ester. Now in this case, since the OH group and the carboxylic acid group are in the same molecule, we would end up getting an intramolecular ester, correct? An intramolecular esterification reaction happens. But remember, Intramolecular reactions take place only when the reaction results in a stable 5 or 6 membered ring. So, do we have the scope of forming a stable ring here? Let's see. Let's first number the carbon chain and then orient it in such a way to form a cyclic compound. So, you can see that the molecule can twist in such a way that the OH and COH can come in closer proximity with each other. And in this case, in the presence of acidic medium, with the elimination of a water molecule, we get a cyclic ester. So, look at what we have got. We have got the product that looks almost exactly like a final product given here, correct? We have an oxygen atom, C double bond O group, OH group and at this carbon atom, we have two methyl groups. So, instead of R, what we have here is two methyl groups. 
from this information we can figure out the structure of a starting aldehyde correct for a starting aldehyde we had proposed the structure rch2cho from which an enolate ion could be formed but given that there are two methyl groups at this particular carbon the final structure should be something like this ch3 ch3 ch cho so this particular carbon has two methyl substituents here and when we perform the entire reaction using this as a starting aldehyde p then we get a final product which looks like this